parameter regression involves adjustable parameters that we can modify in order to minimize some type of objective. So let's say, for example, we have some data points and then we have a predictive model. Okay, maybe that model is too high in this area right here. And so maybe there's a parameter that is maybe the parameter B. If we lower that parameter, then our prediction then matches more closely with the uh, measured data. So we're gonna be working on some computer algorithms here in order to be able to estimate these parameters, especially when we have differential. Okay, so dx dt equals minus k times x. That's an example of a differential equation. So we have these types of equations. So normally we do like maybe a linear equation, you know, where we have x equals, or I'll do, um, you know, y equals mx plus b. And we might have a slope and an intercept there. But let's say we have a differential equation instead. We're gonna set this up and solve it in MATLAB, in Excel, and in Python with Gecko. So to get to this uh, page, I'll leave this in the uh, video description as well. It's this dynamic optimization introduction. And there's just an introductory video here. And then we're gonna go through three examples together. Uh, the first one is going is listed here where we have this data and we have this equation so one of the simplest types of examples that we can think of just to show the concepts and then we'll get a little bit more complicated um, actually this one's actually fairly simple as well okay an analytical expression that we'll compare it with uh, but you can extend this over multiple data sets so maybe you have multiple runs of that batch process and you want to be able to fit a common set of parameters over multiple data sets okay so there's another solution there as well also there's estimating the parameters of a higher order differential equation so we're going to do this third example as well but if you come up here to the first example all right this one also has this uh, excel matlab simulink parameter estimation and, and we'll go through this one in just a little bit of detail, okay? So let's just think about um, this first one where we have a vehicle, all right? Now, here's our automobile. And this one, we have an adjustable gas pedal, okay? So that is the manipulated variable that we can change or we can measure. And then we also want to be able to measure the velocity. All right, so that is going to be our measured value. And then we also want to record the time at which we take those measurements. Now we have a differential equation that relates the gas pedal to the velocity. And that's going to be equal to, okay, the mass times the derivative of the velocity okay plus some type of resistive coefficient times the velocity so as we go faster there's more resistance and then equals k that's going to be a gain to say you know it's steady state if i have the gas pedal pushed down 50 percent how fast am i going to go after a, a long amount of time and then we have this resistive coefficient and then there's our gas pedal all right so we have this differential equation right here we have measurements of velocity, gas pedal, and then we've recorded the time. So let's go ahead and set this up and solve it. We have some sample data there. Uh, if you'd like to follow along, the, probably the easiest way to do this is to get the Jupyter Notebook. And I'll just show you the link for that. Uh, if you come up here, just come to this GitHub link. Oh, I need to update that one. All right, uh, and I'll do that. Just update the link uh, there. It'll work after this video is finished, okay? So uh, I've just got a copy of it right here. And let me just get this moved over. I'll make this just a little bit smaller just so we can see both of these at the same time. Okay, so we have our measurements. So I'll move this one over to the other side just so I'm not uh, blocking it with my video here okay screen layout issues here 
All right, so here we go. We have the uh, Jupyter Notebook. I'll put this one over on this side. Okay, so here we have some of our measurements that are listed right here. And we'll see the mass is 500 kilograms. Just, that's just the weight of our vehicle. And then we have an unknown K value and a B value as well. So those are the two that we're gonna try to estimate from this data. So let's do it in Python first, and I'll show you how to do it in MATLAB and Simulink and Excel as well. All right, so this is Python Gecko, and I'm gonna just record the mass as a floating point number. Here's my B adjustable value. So in Gecko, you have FVs that are gonna be a single value that are gonna be constant or just one value over that whole time horizon. So for parameters that are applicable at every time point, you set those up as FVs. You also have a K value as well. And then we're gonna turn the status on. So that means these are going to be adjustable by the solver. All right, and then we also set up a parameter P. Now, if we were doing a control application, we'd wanna set the lower bound to zero and the upper bound to 100. But in this case, we just have measured values. So we really don't need the bounds on those. But we're gonna be putting in the measured values right here. All right, and then we're gonna set up a CV. This one is a controlled variable or one that we're measuring. And we're gonna put in the measured values here. Then we turn the feedback status on to activate the objective function to try to minimize the difference between the measured and the predicted values. All right, I'm just gonna set up an intermediate variable just to make the expression a little bit easier to read for the equation. So it explicitly calculates tau and then it substitutes it into this equation. So I've just divided it over by B and so mass divided by B is gonna be that tau value. And then I've set up this equation. I could put the V value here on this side. Those are going to be equivalent, <clears throat> okay? Or I can just leave it there on the right. Now don't forget the double equal sign there. All right, I mode five. This is gonna be the dynamic estimation mode in Gecko. And then I'll change nodes to three just to make it a little bit more accurate for each time step, especially because I have some fairly long time steps. All right, I'll set solver equal to one, which is the AP opt solver, and then I'll solve it. So I've set up and solved uh, this, and then let's go ahead and print the solution. All right, there's my K value, there's my B value. All right, and then when I run it, okay, it says gecko not defined. I forgot to run the import of the packages right up here. Okay, so I'll do from gecko import gecko. If you don't have it, um, just do pip install gecko, or if you need to upgrade it, you can upgrade, okay? And it will install and upgrade gecko for you, and then you just import that. Okay, when you're done with it, you can just comment that out. You only need to do that once. Okay, let's come back down here and run it again. And it looks like we've got a successful solution. You can see two degrees of freedom. Here's the solver output in terms of the iteration, the objective, and then the convergence. So it was able to converge equations, and there you can see the final objective. All right, now here you can see the solution. The values that I used to generate this were k equals one and b equals 50. So fairly close, there's a little bit of noise, a little bit of inaccuracy in the measurements but it got uh, very close to the correct solution. Now let's go ahead and do this in Excel and in MATLAB as well. If you'd like to follow along with this, it's just there on the course website and you can download this zipped archive and it will just unzip it and then you can run the examples. There's a video here as well. It's a little bit older, but it shows the, some of the same things and maybe just a little bit more detail, especially with the MATLAB and the Simulink part of it. All right, so I'm gonna open up that folder, estimate parameters. All right, and there are a couple uh, files here, this EST Simulink. So let's go ahead and bring that one up. All right.
right so here is the the uh, car you have your gas pedal and we're just gonna give it a step and then here's our estimator all right and then we'll be able to get our parameters here on the right so when I run it it's gonna run it as if you're running the car real-time collecting real-time data and it's gonna be able to compare what it predicts to the measured values and let's just open up our parameters so it should come up with a, a time constant of about 10 you can see initially you can see it was trying to figure out as it got more data until it finally got enough data that it figured out the time constant was 10 and the, um, that gain value was about 1 okay so it got to the right solution all right, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one. And then let's also look at the Excel solution as well. So I just have it set up here um, with a, a spreadsheet that shows the measured values, which are in blue, and the model predicted values that are in red. And the two that I want to adjust here are the gain. So maybe I said that I think that's 1.5 or it is going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.6, for example, you can see it doesn't match it. So we want to try to make these two match. And what we'll do is we'll minimize either of these, either the sum of squared errors or the sum of absolute errors, to try to make the red and the blue dots line up. So to do that, I'm going to come to Data and over here to Solver. All right. Now, if you don't have Solver, you can always come here to File, and then options and look at add-ins and if you click go here just want to make sure the solver add-in is selected okay and then over on data you can go to solver and we're going to set their objective we're going to select one of these i'll go ahead and select the sum of squared errors okay we're going to change all right, the ones that we're going to change are these two model parameters. All right, subject to the constraints, we really aren't changing the, the gas pedal value. That'll be for a control application. So I can go ahead and just delete that one and delete that one. Okay, and I don't want to necessarily make them non-negative. Um, I think in this case it would be okay to select that, but a lot of times I let it just find a solution for me. All right, and it found the one and the 10 value there. So, and you can see these two are now matched up. So similar to the other one, the gas pedal was turned from zero to 100, just a single step change, and it generated some data, and I was able to fit it much like the Simulink model. All right, so that is Excel and Simulink. And I will go ahead and just show you the MATLAB as well. Okay, so here is APM MATLAB. You're also welcome to uh, use this one as well. Okay, I would recommend the Gecko optimization suite. It does bring up a dashboard um, here with the values and it'll show the measured and predicted values. Okay, let's go on to our next example now, which is example number two. And I'll just bring up the, okay, the web page. All right, here's our second one. We want to estimate the parameter K in this exp exponential decay equation. And you can see it's dx dt equals minus kx. And there is the analytical solution to that. So we can compare what it gives us to the analytical solution. So I'd say at this point, with the prior example that we showed, see if you can work on this one, pause the video, and then um, compare your solution to mine. All right, well, I'm gonna keep going uh, on this. Uh, so here are the time points and the data that we have. Now we want to try to estimate the value of K. So I'm going to set up, first of all, my model. Setting remote equals false means that Gecko does not connect to a remote server. 
the public servers, but it connects just uses just your local version of the uh, AP Monitor engine. All right, I'm going to set up my M dot time. All right, I'll make this a little bit bigger. And then I want my CV value. That's going to be my controlled variable. I'm going to turn the F status to 1. So I'm going to fit to the measurement. And then I'm also going to set up my K value as an FV. Turn its status on. So status and feedback status. There's my equation. I'll set I mode equals 5 for dynamic estimation. And nodes equals 5 for the number of collocation nodes. So get a little bit more accurate in the solution. Display. I won't display the solver output in this case, um, but let's just go ahead and look at the k value, and we will import numpy and matplotlib, and then plot these values. So there's our solution from Gecko as blue circles. There's our predicted values. I'll just round off k to two decimal places. All right, and there is my data. I'll put, print those as uh, red X's. And then also the exact solution. I'll just create a lint space between 0 and 1 and have the XE be the exact solution. I'll create a legend and X label, Y label, and then show the plot. Okay, so now when we run this, then we're going to see the measured values, which are the red X's. And you can see it doesn't fit it exactly, and that's okay. A lot of these regression examples, you're not going to fit, and you don't necessarily want to fit, the noise in the data. And so you can see the exact solution, which is the dotted line. A lot of times we don't have an analytical or an exact solution, so we use numerical methods instead to calculate how the differential equation evolves in time with those given parameters. And you can see k equals 2.56. Okay, let's go on to the final third example. I want to estimate now four parameters in this differential equation. This is a higher order differential equation. We want to minimize the error between the predicted and the measured x values. All right, we're going to use an initial condition of x equals 2 to, that matches the data. So we measured 2 right at the beginning. So we should just have that as our initial condition. We're going to find some new states, though. All right, so this is what you do with these higher order um, differential equations. I'll just go ahead and write this out. Okay, so if I have something like d squared, okay, so the second uh, the second derivative of x with respect to time, then I just create a new, okay, so dx dt equals y. All right, and then I can just have this be uh, dy dt, okay? So I can have it as a first derivative with respect to time uh, within my equation. And so for every higher order of derivative that you have, you just define a new variable, all right? And that goes with z as well. Let's say I have something like, Okay, and I'll make this just a little bit smaller so it can fit on there. All right, and let's just say I have um, third. Okay, then what I do is now I take y, and I'll just say dy dt equals z. And then this is going to be either second derivative of y with respect to t, or it's also going to be equal to the first derivative of z with respect to t. So, um, so you just basically add these variables as you get higher order terms for your differential equation. So let's go ahead and set this up and solve it. I've got my time and my x data. Okay, I'll create my gecko model. You can put remote equals false if you'd like to. There's my time. Let's go ahead and create my states. I only have one that's going to be measured. That's going to be my CV. And I'll set the value equals to my X data. Turn its F status on to fit to the measurement. And then I'll have Y and Z. I'll create an array of values. 
and I'll set those initially equal to zero. And I'll have two, two values, um, as you can see right here. Okay, so two values, value equals zero. Now my adjustable parameters are gonna be A, B, C, and D. And I'll just set those up as an array as well of F, B values. And I'll turn their statuses on. Now here's my differential equation. My original is there. You can see the transformed ones are gonna be these three values. All right, so let's go ahead and set this up now. I have my two that I just used to define Y and Z. Don't forget the double equal sign there. And then I have my uh, third order differential equation. All right, I'll set I mode equals five for dynamic estimation, nodes equals three, and I won't display the solver output, but I will display the parameter values at the end. Let's go ahead and just create a plot of the values versus the measured. Okay, the predicted versus measured and uh, make the plot nice with some legend and label. Okay, so there are my parameter values. And there you can see the measured values, which are the red X, and then the blue circles are the predicted values. So you've got both of those on here, uh, and it looks like it matches fairly well. This is the minimized solution. Given these parameter values right here, it minimizes the difference between the predicted and the measured values. Okay, so that's it for these three examples on parameter regression. Uh, if you would like the solution notebook, just come here to solution notebook or the, on Google Colab, and I'll make sure these are working as well. And this course has many other exercises. This is just the introduction here on the right, but we're gonna get into estimation and control, moving horizon estimation, talk about some of the estimator objectives when you set up a CV and what does the estimator objective look like. All right, and then the other thing we'll do is estimator tuning as well. So a lot of times estimators, you want to design the estimator so it doesn't just match the data, but it produces good parameter values that you can use to try to predict something in the future. So there's kind of two objectives that we're looking at there, not necessarily have the parameters adjust a lot from cycle to cycle, but have a consistent set of parameters that are gonna work well over a long period of time. And then there's a little bit of information on statistics as well. And if we come back up to the overall, okay, the course outline, we can see right here, we're in the mode of, okay, getting data, and then we're using uh, some of these types of parameter estimation, in this case on the left here, moving horizon estimation. Uh, we're also gonna be talking about other methods uh, for machine learning to be able to update the, the parameter values. Reinforcement learning is one of those where you iteratively learn the process and learn the parameters or the actions that you should take based on some kind of reward. So moving horizon estimation is similar to that but we don't, um, you know, we take it one time step at a time. It's a Bayesian estimation uh, technique. And I'll just show this one graphic here. I think that it gives a very nice overview of what we're doing in the class. So you can see this black line right here. This is our current time. And then the purple off to the left of it, that's our moving horizon estimation where we have that horizon of measurements that we're using to update our model. And then we use that, those parameters, to then predict into the future and suggest control actions that you can see on the very bottom. Now, once those control actions are made, you can see that the, um, the control actions don't change. But be, before they're made, so off to the right, in kind of that yellow zone, you can see it constantly adjusting as it gets better parameter values and it gets updates from the measurement. So that's a, just a little bit about where we're going. This is just an introduction to dynamic parameter estimation. And we'll also talk about state estimation as well.